Hi guys, Thomas here from Fast Track FBA, and today I want to talk about the recent changes to Keeper, in particular around the buy box, the change in the seller rank, and some new functionality that might be quite interesting to you. Stay tuned. Okay guys, so what I wanna do now is talk through the changes to Keeper. But before I go into those changes, if you're not, actually say, really up to date on Keeper or how to read the Keeper graphs, and hey, don't get me wrong, they are really complex and there is a lot to take on board. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drop a little link just up here, which is going to take you to a playlist I created of a series of videos about Keeper. And I walk you through everything from the basics, i.e. just understanding it, to some really advanced tips and tricks, which are gonna really help Help you in your sourcing and deal analysis. So have a look up there and you'll see that link to keep a training. But what I'm going to do now is really just jump on the computer and I'm going to talk you through those changes as from the keeper side, but also as well that new functionality. So let's get started on the computer now. Right, okay guys, so here we are. Now this is the update announcement from Keeper and there's literally two that I'm gonna go through. What I will say first of all is I will share the links down below for all these so you can have a look yourself. And, and second thing as well is all these updates, everything we're gonna be talking about now are this is for the professional, the, the paid Keeper account. And if you're not using the paid Keeper account, this won't be relevant. But if you're into any form of arbitrage, you know, Amazon research, you're gonna to need the paid keeper account um, I'll drop a link down below and obviously you can get a copy of that as well so this is it I'll just now talk through the changes so basically keeper said here changes or sales rank and buy box so basically they're saying here sales rank status for about 10% of the products that they have in the Amazon inventory of all their keeper products they track they can no longer update the main sales category so you know for example you might have something whereby it's in electronics but then also as well it's in a subcategory called like laptops for example so what they're saying is that that main category it could be electronics or like toys and games or beauty they're no longer able to get that information from Amazon so hence they're no longer able to track it so that's one big update and something to be aware of just in when you're looking at the graphs so they're hoping it's going to be a temporary issue but it may be a bit longer hence why they've now got some new graphs being bought out so just be aware of that and we'll talk through these graphs in a minute now they've added in a new sales rank only graph and we'll show you that as well and also as well, it includes a subcategory so we'll, sh we'll talk through that in a minute and go through it they've also done updates to the buy box so you can now see who has if we say in one the buy box it's no longer a buy box it's a buy line and we'll see that as well so you're going to no longer a buy box but it's now displayed using a line a continuous pink line and also as well you can see who's got the fulfillment options when you hover over the buy box legend and again we'll talk through that in a bit the interesting one as well is that they're actually showing buy box statistics so we'll, we'll talk through this is basically they are showing for pretty much all the products you can go now into data and buy box statistics and see who you know who's won the buy box and at what price what's the average price been and what percentage so beforehand one thing we used to always do was you say hover over the buy box icon and try and see oh it's amazon sharing now quite simply we can just go to data buy box statistics amazon sharing yes or no very easy to do and also as our amazon tells us or keeper tells us what range of data it's looking at so here it's saying five days and over the five days amazon's won it 94 percent of the time and then woot have won it six percent of the time so when you're competing versus amazon or maybe you're worried about competing against amazon number one that's going to tell you how much they're sharing so you can get an estimation of how many sales of the listing you're going to be able to win and then number two what average price you need to price it at in order to be competitive versus amazon so quite interesting there to have a look at that now also as well they've just done some other bits and bobs to say well one big actual thing they've done here is they're saying the way they get their data i.e they get their data from amazon if amazon is no longer on the buy box or holding the buy box they don't know if amazon's even a seller so beforehand you used to go oh the buy box is owned by a third party or filmed by amazon or fulfilled by merchant great not a problem and you could see if amazon was on the, on the listing as well and you would know because Amazon's on the listing and then if someone else has won the buy box, Amazon is sharing, great. Now you can't because no longer Amazon or no longer can keep her show you 
if Amazon is on the listing when it doesn't win the buy box. So it's something to be just really mindful of that beforehand when we used to see gaps, the gap would mean Amazon is no longer there, but now it might not mean that, it might mean they're there and they're sharing the buy box, but they're just in the background. So we'll just show you that on a graph in a bit as well. This price is no longer updated unless it can be publicly accessible and they've removed some other product types. So again, I'll share a link to this so you can have a look yourself. The other one as well, they talked about dedicated sales rank graphs. So here's an example here. They've got two colored lines. They've got the main category, which is books. And then underneath that, they've got the subcategories like textbooks. So they show you the two graphs and you can see that. And we'll just go through that and have a look now. So let's just jump into a product. So we are right here and we've got a DeLonghi toaster. And okay, so if we just kind of have a quick scroll down, what we can see here is if we look at the graph itself, what I will actually do is if I just copy this as another example and so this is a Delonghi toaster and now we've got the Keeper graphs here but what I'm going to do is just load it up into Keeper so it's a lot bigger on the screen so let's do that now. Voila, so we've got loaded into Keeper itself and what we can see here is we've now got a new graph, this middle one and you can turn it on and off by clicking the sub ranks and that will turn that off on, you can click on it again and turn it back on again. Now, what does this mean? This basically means right here, this, this middle, this green line in the middle, the one area shaded, that's called the main category. So for us, home and kitchen. There you go, you can see home and kitchen and I'll turn off toasters, so home and kitchen. Now that's the main category, that's the one that you're really interested in because that tells you how it competes against all the other products in home and kitchen. Now, the next one they have is they're now giving the subcategory, so you can turn off Home and Kitchen and just see what it is in toasters. So, you know, in Home and Kitchen, there's lots of products, and one category or subcategory within the Home and Kitchen category is toasters. So that now shows you where this product is located in toasters. Now, you might ask why. Well, sometimes for some of the products, Amazon can no longer get the main category. It can no longer get the Home and Kitchen, it can only get the subcategory data from Amazon. And as a result, if, for example, here, we might see, oh, it's really good. It's going 5,266 rank, you know, 3,569, you know, good rank. I'm happy with that. And then one day that drops out and then it pops into 13. It will just say 13. And basically what's happened is the sales hasn't gone through the roof. It's done really well. No, what's actually happened is that it's now stopped tracking the main category, i.e. home and kitchen and now started tracking a subcategory because Amazon's no longer showing that information. So if you do see that big jump, just be mindful. And the other thing that you will see is you'll see a green line pop up here just at the top to say that it's changed categories. And you'll see that when you hover over it, it'll say category changed to what it is now. So just be mindful if you see that really big jump, you are gonna be now looking at a subcategory, not the actual main category. And you'll see that with the green line above. So the other change we've also seen is is the sales rank or the buy box sorry so if we kind of if we look beforehand if we kind of hover into here what we can see is beforehand it's always been a dot a dot a dot a dot and it's been a buy box so basically it's always just been a box when there's something changed in the buy box so if the seller's changed or the price has changed anything's changed with that buy box the price that bot that a new dot has appeared but now it's no longer a buy box it's a buy line so you can see here a buy line going across now it doesn't, if it changes, it just changes. I.e. like if the price changes or the seller changes, that line, that line will only change the price. But the one thing you can do now is when you hover over the buy box, you'll probably just see along the top. And if I just kind of look along the top here, and what I'll do is I'll get it highlighted in the video, is that you can see now that it's got the colors. So for this one, you're gonna have the blue means it's seller fulfilled by merchant or fulfilled by merchant. If it's gonna be the kind of, uh, dark orange going more kind of reddish that's going to be the fulfillment by Amazon a you know third party seller fulfillment by Amazon and then finally if it is the orange color the same as Amazon here that is going to be Amazon's on the buy box and if you just kind of zoom out you might be able to see it here you can see different ones around here Amazon's on the buy box and then it goes blue and then we've got some FBA sellers in there so that's the new way they're showing the data and interesting enough you can see before the changes to the buy box it had it was a line and a gap. Now it's just a continuous line to say who's on that buy box. And if we zoom in, you can see here, it's got a continuous line of fulfillment by merchant, fulfillment by merchant, and then coming up to some fulfillment by Amazon quite recently. So quite interesting there, and it just shows you what's going on. 
So that's some changes there onto the buy box. Now, another one you might look at is to say when the buy box is no longer in action, i.e. it's suppressed, maybe the price is too high, then there's gonna be a gap. This gap here shows you that actually they've got no buy box data, so it's been suppressed. So we can see that in other listings and I'll go through that as well. But the other one which I'll show you is quite interesting here is to say if you go to data and then also as well, you can look at the buy box statistics settings. So we'll just load that up now. So here what it says is it says how many sellers are on this listing who have the buy box. Now if we just come back to the listing itself, there are right now nine sellers. So nine people on this listing and let's just go and have a quick look at that. And you can see here nine sellers. Now, or actually all the different sellers. Now, interesting enough, whenever we're looking at Amazon, you know, we're doing competing against other sellers. The one thing we're really interested in isn't so much about how many sellers on the listing, it's actually about how many people we're competing against. What's our competition? So we're really interested in this. So it's really interesting to say who's won the buy box, what percentage of time, and at what price. So you can see here that this person is 37.34 and they've won it 90% of the time. Now we've always talked about buy box rotation and that Amazon should share it, but interestingly enough, this person is only 60p more expensive than this, this first seller, but they're now only winning at 7% of the time. So while they're quite close, they are not winning at half as much, and that might have something to do with because of the review count. But for you, when you're maybe looking at your deals, maybe doing an analysis of products you've currently got in stock, being able to see this buy box statistics is gonna be key for you to understand why am I not getting sales? What, who is getting the sales? And what are their statistics versus mine? And what do I need to do to win that buy box? So really interesting here that you can say, look, right now, this buy box is potentially being shared between only three sellers. And the buy box is generally going for about 37, 34. And that's collected over 14 days worth of data. So 14 days worth of data. So that's really good just to say, when you're doing reviews of products, what price do I need to sell it at to win the majority of sales? Well now, keep us showing that in a very easy to use format, which is going to help you to understand is your deal going to be a good deal or is it not? So that's a little bit about that buy box statistics, but let's just have a look at some other opportunities. So here, the one thing we can kind of say is if you look into this section down here, and this is for a lint uh, selection chocolate box, what we can see here is the price has been £10, £10, £10, then it's gone up to £16.97. And again, what you probably notice is that interestingly enough here, and it might be that the changes haven't been updated yet. Amazon are on the listing, £10, and we can see the buy box line there, Amazon, and then it's jumped up to 17 Buy box suppressed, no buy box line. And again, Amazon on the listing, £10, and now up to 16 99 and that's the price today. Down here, what we can see is it also shows you the sales rank information. So right here, we've got this sales rank middle graph, but also it has it down the bottom here. So it shows you the main category, and it shows you the subcategories and what sales rank is, what percentage of that sales that category is. And it tells you, hey, look, here you go, how many products are in that category? So for grocery, there are 1.2, uh, 1.219 million products in grocery and sales rank is going to be, there you go, 1,800, which is the top 1%. So that's going to be quite useful for you if you just want to get a good feeling of what percentage or where does this sit in the overall category. So nice little top tip there. One more we've got right here. This is Lego and architecture. And you can see, you see again this line. And if I move, zoom in, we've got right here. This is just showing the buy box. And we can see that going up and down and then it's going up in price. And now we're getting buy box suppressed. And interesting enough, buy box has come back in there and then it's disappeared. We've had no buy box, so Amazon maybe have given the buy box away. It'll say allowed the buy box to show, and then said, no, we're suppressing it, it's too, too expensive. And you can see when you hover over the buy box information here, you can see that buy box sharing between Amazon and an FBA seller, Amazon FBA seller, lots and lots of information there. And then you can also see down here toys, you can see how many, you know, there's 4.9 million products in toys, and you'll see it's in top 1% of architecture. And then the final one you might want to look at if you're interested in selling this product is the buy box statistics, and just see what that says or what that comes up with. And it's saying here, look, toys for fun are winning at 62% of the time. And interesting enough, their average price is £31.16. Right now, they're selling this product for £40.86. But you can kind of see back in time, they were going down to about £30.10. 
So the majority of the time, and you just got to be mindful. This is when the, they're live on the buy box, not when they're not when their buy box is pressed. So their average time of price in the buy box is about thirty-one pound sixteen when the buy box is showing. If it isn't showing, obviously keeper isn't going to record the buy box price, and hence it's not going to put it in here. But it gives you a very good indication of who are sellers on the listings. But hey, that is a little bit about Keeper. Um, what I will do also as well, I will drop all the links to the Keeper notes here that we've got down below, and also I'll drop a link to Keeper. Obviously, if you want to download it, you can do that down below. And finally, I will just reiterate, this is for the paid version of Keeper. Um, if you haven't got it, it's worth it. Honestly, it's probably the number one tool that I recommend to everyone doing any form of Amazon research. Hey guys, hopefully you found that really informative and hey, hopefully it's gonna help you grow your Amazon business through doing better deal analysis. I love Keeper, it's such a great tool and I use it every single day. And if you want to know, I actually do the training for Keeper in the Fast Track FBA Academy. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna share this video not only with you, obviously on my YouTube channel, I'll also be sharing it with my team, my VAs and also anyone else who I know in the Amazon business because hopefully it's gonna help them doing their deal analysis. So what I'll say to you is if you like it as well, make sure you share it to other people hopefully it's going to help them out in their amazon business now give me a thumbs up if it's been great any questions drop them down below but anything else be sure to click subscribe because that's going to make sure you get notified the moment i release any more videos and hey what i will say is from me thomas parkinson at fast trick fba thank you very much